um, the wondrous principles and uh, true emptiness. So the, in the initial verse, the principles in our pure nature give us clarity of the Dharma of true suchness. So the principles, um, this is in the pure nature. I'm, I, if I were to use, uh, this is not a very uh, uh, good way for me to illustrate, but it, it gets the point across. Um, it's like water. So you go into a pond, there's murky water in there. And um, Buddha also uses an, an analogy during uh, his time. So when the water is murky, because the sedi sediments are afloat, but if we let the sediments were to settle down, the water becomes clear. So that's the, the principles of this pure nature. And when it's pure, it gives clarity in the same way as the clarity of water will let us see right to the bottom uh, of the pond. So I'm not sure whether you have done snorkeling uh, or, or diving uh, before. Um, there was one trip that I went, uh, my home sister and I, we went to Sipadan. Sipadan is one of the best diving spots in the world, actually. And um, it's quite fascinating that in Sipadan Island, it's like an atoll that rises from the sea for about 2,000 feet from the bottom of the sea. But because the water is so clear, uh, you can see deep down um, to the depth of hundreds uh, of feet, um, we were at a thousand of feet, you can see deep uh, down there. And this is what this um, purity is about. So because of a single thought, uh, arising people begin to revel in arguing. And, uh, and that's why we have because of our thoughts. So, and I get to the point about the flawless, flawless uh, study that Marcel mentioned about uh, is samadhi, uh, getting engaged in samadhi. So in samadhi, we know the arising of our thought. So, but you only take a single thought at the spark of an argument. And because of this plane, um, they enter this house, which is the burning house. The three realms are created solely by the mind. And there is a wondrous existence and true entry. Why is it wondrous? Because you see, we create, and yet there is a wonder existence. And this is actually the essence of the Heart Sutra, uh, if you're familiar with the Heart Sutra, and sometimes Master mentioned about the Heart Sutra. Um, and, and this is uh, the, uh, the mind. Uh, form is emptiness, emptiness uh, is form. So Master's explanation, through suchness refers to the true principles. So we learn the Buddha's teaching to access the principles and our pure intrinsic nature. So if we, because we are unenlightened, we are all, I mean, for us, we, we, we are murky waters. And uh, so because we are murky waters, we need to set up, set up all these sediments. So in the path of uh, uh, purification, um, is that we do not continue to deposit more sediments, which um, as a result of all of our past karmic causes. And um, so at the same time, we in, in this life, we need to purify all the past karmic causes, which are the sediments. So, so we must investigate these principles in pure nature or true suchness. They give us clarity of the Dharma of true suchness. So when we give us the clarity of the truth such then we are no longer obscure, then we see the truth. But is it possible, for example, that one, someone who is practicing this so well, um, we have the, um, the sediments um, that we have are piled up way higher than the Mount Everest, as high as Mount Sumeru. And there's all the past karmic seeds that we have. So and therefore, how, it takes innumerable lifetime to purify that, but if we are remaining, we remain pure and clear in our mind, the sediments of flow will eventually sink to the bottom. So therefore, the clarity of the Dharma uh, comes to us, not necessarily when we are enlightened. So therefore, whilst we have those uh, Karma, the conditions may be right, thunderstorms will come in, the winds will blow, and then ruffle up all the sediments that arises. So therefore, we're going to be very mindful that what are these 
condition that come to us, what are the storms that come to our life that rouse us up in our desire, emotion to, to, to get this, all these sediments to come out and become murky water. So we could, that's the reason why, unless we grow in our consciousness, we do not know we are murky water. So it's, so there is true suchness. So it is all within our mind and we can be found in our daily living. So that, therefore, even daily life, we are practiced. We will to for us as a householder and the practice had to be full time. So that therefore we know at any point in time when we get ruffled up and become murky water. And, 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 and so therefore, if we then get engaged in the conditions in people matters or objects, and these people matters or objects that arises, and all, they will all arise in a form of whirly winds that will blow on us. And so when all these things will come to us, so and we are not mindful in a way, so not mindful of our precepts, not mindful, and precepts are prevent the arising of the, of the sediments. Samadhi is to keep it calm. So therefore, then we can learn of the wisdom of how we can have clear water and clear mind, and there's the clarity of the mind. So once we are greedy, we pursue things in our surroundings. And this includes pursuing knowledge as well as so many of you have already shared this uh, morning. We do not just uh, we do not just pursue material things. We also pursue lots of scholarly knowledge, which will not help us find true suchness. So, because of single thought of arrogance, so we can engage in uh, debates, argument. A person may not be un then may be unwilling to fully accept the dharma because holding on to the to the particular. Um, uh, understanding of his also this worldly knowledge and cleverness and some of you are, are very well aware of um, uh, what I uh, mentioned to you all in the past uh, I think this is especially so uh, sister Carping and sister moon um, uh, my home sister do you know that none of the world religious leaders ever wrote anything down. And this implies including the Buddha, Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, Moses. They never wrote anything down. And I, I think the danger uh, of, and I think that because of their wisdom, then the foresight they knew, whatever written down by them, will be interpreted with our mundane consciousness. Our mundane consciousness in our early cleverness. And so we all, we are all lawyers will interpret the words of the great sage in a wonderful way of our mind will tell us. Because an enlightened being means a person whose mind is the master. An awakened being means one, one's mind is the servant and he is the master. So, all these things that we have at the, and uh, we learn the Dharma and, and, and I've mentioned to you all before, the four stages of learning here. One is knowing, and this very much based on the capacity of our mind to know. And the second one is understanding. And un you, you obviously, you need some intelligence uh, in our mind, otherwise you can't understand. And right there is the capability of the mind. And these two are uh, manifestation of the power of the mind and that mind uh, that we have. And we need to use the mind. So, but yet it's the same mind that we need to, to tame. And that's where realization comes in. And that's where uh, you can do that when your consciousness has grown. And that's where the difference between scholarly knowledge and a spiritual practitioner. But all this, Obviously, um, I'm sure in, in your spiritual journey, you will come across different, different types of uh, uh, practitioners. Some people who are very scholarly and knows a lot. Um, so in, in, for me, in, I can tell you in my past life, I was an arrogant scholar. Um, so I got to subdue myself in this life. So you can actually tell, uh, how clever a person is. And I think I've shared with you all before, right? You can tell how clever, clever a person is by the answer he gives. You can tell how wise a person is by the question he asks. 
but you can tell how well spiritual develop a person is by the silence he keeps. So because of all these things, we have um, different levels of practitioners. Uh, these people who um, have a lot of knowledge, uh, scholarly knowledge and um, arrogant. So they revel in arguing, playing with words. And remember I mentioned about uh, why these great sages in the world never wrote anything down and making judgments and all these are worldly things about the uh, workings of our mind. So we should understand it is rare to be born a hum human and rare to encounter Buddha Dharma. So because of this, we need to probably seek to experience and mindful learn from it. So the principles of a pure nature give us the clarity of a Dharma, a true suchness, when we are no longer be murky in our thoughts and our mind. So we can wholeheartedly work out, work hard on this, and then naturally understand the wondrous existence uh, and what is and true emptiness and what are these. And um, they said the principles are uh, so beautiful. So let me I'll run through this and I'll explain. Such perf perfectly harmonious principles are complete on structure in all matters and, and objects. So because the principles are pure, they are wondrous, uh, they have wondrous existence and inherent emptiness. So therefore, if we then understand this, um, the mind of ours became murky. And yet from that murkiness of the water, it become, become clear. So, um, and, and it's just like um, when I went uh, snorkeling the Dusipadan, and when I look down uh, to a, a thousand feet down and, um, and hundreds of feet and thousand feet down, it was so crystal clear and I never knew about the existence uh, of the beauty uh, of, this, of, 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 this, of the, uh, the ocean bay until uh, that time. So in as much of the same way, and it's from that murky, murkiness that you can actually get that uh, realization or a wonder of that realization uh, that comes about uh, from uh, the form that we live in, right? So the, all this arises from matters and objects. So when matters and objects are unobstructed, then we can realize that wondrous existence. But that wondrous existence can only, also comes about when you realize the inherent emptiness of these matters and objects. So the emptiness of the skandha. So if we have a six roots, we've got a six us and a six consciousness. So if we then realize the emptiness of the skandhas, we will no longer be disturbed by the six dust. When we're no longer by the six dust, the six consciousness of the mundane consciousness will no longer be disturbed at that level. So we rise above that. And that's where you can realize the wondrous existence. So true emptiness appears uh, from wondrous existence. Right? And so you rise above that, and that's when you realize the emptiness of the skandhas. So in learning the Buddha's way, we must be mindful of the principles of pure nature because the clarity of the Dharma or true suchness. So all this, this teaching today follows up from the teaching that Master gave us a few days ago of the six roots, the six uh, dust, the six consciousness, and how that can manifest uh, to, uh, to understand um, the wondrous existence and the inherent emptiness. There are people who uh, there are people who do not have great resolve and do not make great vows. So they always remain uh, greatly attached to the three realms. And then they, they, and you look uh, in this world today, um, there are plenty of them, including people with holding very great powers. So the Buddha is like a worldly father, of course. Uh, like every father, he wants all the children to do good. So therefore, we need to have this right mindfulness in our practice and accept the teachings to uphold uh, the wish, uh, virtuous dharma. So those who are attached to delusion continue to create karma and are able to escape the affliction. This is due to views and thinking. But even at this moment in time, day after day, when we live, do you know that we are so mesmerized by so many things happening in the world right now? Because you know what? Advertisements appear all the time. 
And what are advertis what does advertisement mean? Advertisement means is, is to make sure we are deluded, is it not? Advertisement is to make sure you're deluded so that we make decisions to buy things. And we are so fascinated by magic shows. Why do we are so mad fascinated by magic shows? Because we like to be tricked. We enjoy being tricked. So therefore, um, that, 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 that's how the Monday consciousness works. So that's the reason why we got to be very mindful. So the lessons learned. We cling to our own perspective, indulging ourselves to desire for pleasure. And this is the thing about living the life of pleasures. If you live in a life of pleasure, you don't know, then we do not understand what pleasure of life it means. So we end up indulging deeply in enjoying because we are selfish. We only care about our own perspective. I do not think of how to comprehend a big picture. Uh, this especially wallowing in this decadence without seeking escape, which is, um, I use the term wallowing in the mother samsara. So in this house, there's nothing to take joy in. It's all burning. And so this joy of worldly pleasure that we, the master is speaking about is actually suffering. And this is what the inverted views is about. And because we are deluded, we are lost. And we, so we must quickly immerse ourselves in the Buddha Dharma and bathe in the stream of Dharma, which is the clear water that we should have, the pure, pure, the pure water to wash away our afflictions. So we must not cling to suffering as a joy. It's clearly suffering and it's an inverted view. So that's why we've got to be mindful of our life becomings when they come. So we do not get riled up by the storms in our life. We don't know when, uh, there's, there's, there are a lot of magics out there um, in, in, in our daily life. So don't, don't be uh, fooled by all the tricks and the magic out there. So we must clearly discern uh, right uh, from wrong. We learn the Buddha's teaching to await uh, and be clear-minded. And so therefore, we must understand that print, the all principles are empty by nature. And, um, and that when we un understand we are empty by nature, and we then understand the emptiness of all uh, uh, the matters that are arising from there, the objects uh, for feeling perception, um, mental formation and consciousness. And so therefore, we can understand and realize that true uh, intrinsic nature, which is the true suchness within ourselves, and uh, so the afflictions of the three arms can be turned from uh, from affliction in the body, and that is a transformation of our life. So we undertake how do we transform our life? First of all, transform our character, because a character comes from the higher level of consciousness. So in contemplation, and this contemplation is Irene here today, right? So this is especially for you. Our thoughts are different because the minds of people are different. The minds of people are different because the habitual tendencies of people are different. The habitual tendencies are different because the karmic imprint of one differs from the others. The truth of reality is emptiness. And when we understand um, and not be indulging in all this uh, had tendency and the defilements of the others, the phenomenon is without phenomenon is without self. Like right? did you see in there? The uh, one out of all for mindfulness and all this creation of the mind. So the self that one gives to the phenomena is the manifestation of the one's mind. Therefore, all phenomena are illusory. So therefore, we need to understand there are a lot of magicians uh, out there. So relationship. This is about debates in a relationship and for more often than not, we have we get into a lot of debates. In virtues, we see the realization of right and wrong. But in wisdom, you realize the emptiness of right and wrong and that's what the difference is. Okay, come in. Uh, so there's only emptiness in your victory. It means nothing, isn't it? So why are we fighting a debate? At the end of the day, it's emptiness, all right? Kanan, brothers and sisters, thank you. And then unlimited Wu Xian Wu Xian Kanan to our brother Chin for a wonderful, wonderful summary.